What's going on you guys? Welcome to the Single Guy channel. I have a very interesting, <laughs> this might be intriguing, <laughs> subject today, and that's why women love psychopaths. So I know I said this in the title, um, women don't love psychopaths. They actually try and avoid them actively. But uh, a lot of insecure, sometimes troubled women do. They end up falling for them, okay? Uh, the perfect example of this is uh, like guys like Jeffrey Dahmer and Ted Bundy. Uh, very frequently you'll find prison inmates um, getting love letters from women who start fantasizing about them. You know, Ted Bundy received dozens or maybe even hundreds uh, of love letters from women. You know, he was a national figure that people find out about. Women always tend to have a very intriguing and sometimes disturbing relationship with like, you know, fucked up shit that happens, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And you see this all the time, okay? Now, the average woman is usually intrigued by it, but... Uh, doesn't really, she's actively looking to avoid people like that, okay? But I'm gonna describe why women find it intriguing and also why some women find those very reprehensible and despicable human beings appealing, okay? Uh, so we're gonna get into some dark stuff today, but hopefully by the end of this, you will not be so suspicious of women and you'll end up seeing kind of why they do the things and you know be able to spot women that, you know, might be falling into that category, okay? Because men do a lot of bad things, and then there are a lot of women that go after these guys that do a lot of bad things, <laughs> um, unfortunately, uh, as, as, is, as is with everything. So uh, we'll get into the video right now. Okay, so let's talk about why women love psychopaths. Psychopathy, as defined by Wikipedia, so it's probably accurate, Sometimes considered synonymous with sociopathy is traditionally a personality disorder characterized by persistent antisocial behavior, impaired empathy and remorse, and bold, disinhibited, and egotistical traits. So a couple key words there, antisocial, lack of empathy, and disinhibited egotistical traits. The, these are serial killers, these are rapists, these are people that in society we have decided that they do not belong because they harm people, and rightfully so. They should not be a part of our um, of, of an acceptable society that we live in. We cannot have people like that in there. Um, but why are some women drawn to these types of people? Well, psych psychopathy and you know psychopathic behavior is very, very common among men. You don't, you don't see it as much in women. Um, it does happen, but it, it's a lot less, okay? Serial killers are usually almost always uh, men. There have been some women serial killers, but, but not quite as many. Men, when it comes to the masculine, the masculine, a lot of people like to, especially in today's day and age, they like to hijack the term masculinity and define it whatever they want. But masculinity is neither good or bad. There are very masculine men that do horrible things, and there are very masculine men that do amazing things things, okay? Masculinity is not good or bad, but what it is, is it is an ability to do things that maybe aren't necessarily part of the traditional grain of society, okay? A, ma a very masculine man isn't afraid to stick out of the norms, and so just by that alone, like a lot of the bad boys you see in high school who like don't, who show up late to class, smoke weed, or maybe, not, maybe smoking weed's not being a bad boy anymore, maybe that's just being normal in high school, but uh, you know what I mean. They, they tend to fantasize about uh, these guys and uh, when young girls look at them they're riding a motorcycle or whatever like they're doing some bad boy stuff like they're into that because it's a very very masculine trait you know as women get older they learn that these bad boys aren't necessarily like good to get with and so they don't get with them anymore but even farther down than that you find women that are even more troubled or disturbed or they don't have a good they don't have they have no father figure within them um, they tend to gravitate towards these like very aggressive kinds of men. Um, and it's because it's hitting them at a biological point and because they have these unsatisfied needs, they look for, they're, they're looking for them in the wrong area. It's like um, if, if you're starving and somebody, somebody's dangling rhesus in front of you, you know, rhesus isn't the best thing for you to eat, but you're going to eat it even though it's bad for your health, okay? Even though it's going to harm you, even though it's going to do all those things. Because you have such an insatiable need for something and the most obvious thing in front of you is, is dangling in front of you, you're probably going to take it. Okay, now I hopefully I, I wish I could think of a more aggressive or worse example than a rhesus species for, for a psychopath, um, but I couldn't. So th that's the general idea behind it is that it's very, very hardcore, like masculine traits that women are going for to, an, to a ridiculous extent. Okay, 
Now, there's also the side that women see that's you know not very very antisocial. They they can't fit in. This is actually unattractive for most women. Okay, but if they don't understand social cues too, if they don't understand societal things, then they become um, then it's not a it's not a detriment for them. They they see it as as fine or maybe oh he's he's antisocial too. Like maybe he's he's like me. You know that's kind of what they go for. So women will get suck, suckered in to a lot of these kinds of guys like um, Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, Charles Manson was another one. A lot of the women who joined his cult were of this category. You know, they were very antisocial. They didn't understand social cues and they were very, very troubled. They were women who, um, you know, didn't grow up in very good environments. Yes, they came from households. A lot of times they were like uh, middle class households, but they were basically neglected. Like they didn't have parents in in the picture at all. So they have this insatiable need to find someone who will lead them. And the only person that they could follow or go for was a very antisocial person who fit outside of the grain. Now, I am not saying that to get these kinds of women, you need to be this kind of guy. And by the way, you don't want to get these kinds of women. But is there anything that we can learn from psychopaths without necessarily being a psychopath? Hopefully, hopefully, for the love of God, I hope nobody watches this video and thinks being a psychopath is the way to go. Because it's not. Like I said, there's a lot of bad traits that psychopaths have that um, women are not into, okay? Almost always when the women find out that they actually murdered people, they're not into it, okay? Um, What we can learn from psychopaths is that we can learn that going against the grain of society is sometimes okay, okay? It's okay to do it in certain in, 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 in measures. It's okay to do, it's okay to be yourself. You don't always have to fit in. You can't embody those bad boy traits without necessarily being a bad boy by going for what you want and doing and, and who you are. If you're also a kind, social, and caring person, but you're not all, you're not afraid to go against the grain of society, that is the most attractive guy that you can be. That guy beats the psychopath any day of the freaking week, okay? And for some of you guys, what I invite you to do is also don't be afraid to be disliked by some people. You know, for a lot of my students, I find that they're so they're so afraid to upset other people that they don't do the things that they want to do. A psychopath has no problem with that. All right? Too much so. But I would like some people who are watching this video maybe, and you know who you are if you're walking through life and you're feeling scared constantly about upsetting others, you have a lot of permission seeking behaviors. What you need to do is you need to not, like I I would invite you to, to actively go out there and express yourself and be okay with people not always liking you. Because if you try and be liked by everybody, you're gonna be, you're not gonna be loved by anybody, okay? No one's going to really go for you. You're not going to be desired. So women recognize this. And although the troubled women go for the psychopaths, a healthy, um, smart, intelligent, beautiful woman is going to go for a guy who is like what I described. Not the psychopath, but someone who is also like able to go against the grand society um, and is uh, someone who uh, goes on their own path and is not always looking to other people to try and be a certain way. Okay, so don't be a psychopath. Psychopaths are terrible, um, but take some of the going against the grain of society and doing your own thing, and I think you can add it to your game. I think you can add it to your life, and it's going to make your dating life a whole lot better. Cool. Well, thanks for watching, you guys. Hopefully, you learned a little bit from this. Hopefully, you've learned why women um, you know, wrote all those love letters to those crazy guys and why they're obsessed with those kinds of characters. Um, you know, there, there is a sexual component to it, but it's something that uh, you can all have and not be um, as dislikable and reprehensible as those people that we just mentioned. So, thanks for watching.